and this will be our sixth session in our seven-part series where we are working our way around the gates of your spleen center to clear out and transmute any stuck, stagnant energy and habitual patterns and programming around fear, worry, and anxiety. you've ever found yourself saying, I can't believe I'm still dealing with this. I can't believe this came back. I can't believe this came up again. I'm so tired of this feeling. I thought I was past this already. Each time it comes up, it's coming up to come out. And the more you surrender, instead of resisting it, the smoother And quicker, you'll clear it. Okay, are you comfortable? Isn't this so soft? I know. Yes. It's my are going to be working on the gate 28. The nine centers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is where we'll be working today on you. And also, it calms the mind, and it allows new information to be received. Hello, love, and welcome to another ASMR. Quantum Human Design Session. Whether you are taking a pause at any point throughout your day for a refresh or a desire to leave the day behind and drift off to a deeply restorative and sound sleep, may you find what you need here. And this will be our sixth session in our seven-part series where we are working our way around the gates of your spleen center to clear out and transmute any stuck, stagnant energy. 
energy and habitual patterns and programming around fear, worry, and anxiety. We're going to be talking about and working on the gate 28 today, the gate of challenge or adventure in quantum human design. And we'll be looking at the shadow or the unbalanced expression of this energy, which is the fear that life has no meaning or is purposeless. I have our incense holder. I just wanted to show you. I love this incense holder. As the yin and the yang, the sun and the moon, the ocean and the mountains. There's nowhere in the chart that says that we are here to suffer because we're not. And struggling or being challenged really gets a bad rap. Most people we want to avoid struggles, avoid challenges, and avoid things that seem hard, but it is where we can learn valuable lessons and experience the most growth. Now, no one wants to be struggling or challenged all of the time. But if you choose to have the perspective of learning and growing through those times, then you will learn what is truly valuable and build resilience and strength and tenacity. Mm, here's our, our box of incense. We're going to use to prepare our space together, cleanse the space and our auras. Of any Unwanted energies, lower frequency energies, or anything you may have picked up throughout your day. is Rose Haggerwood and Sweet Gum. I 
do hope someday that we wouldn't have to face any challenges or struggles to learn and grow. I do believe that we can learn and grow without having to go through pain and challenge and struggle. But until we get to that space and place where that's the world that we live in, what we are experiencing and seeing and witnessing, we can maybe not control everything that happens, but we can control how we choose to either react or respond, and how we feel and perceive. either what we're going through personally or what we're seeing other people go through. So, today we're going to be working on clearing and cleansing and transmuting this lower frequency and healing and sealing and anchoring in the optimal or highest expression of this energy. And then we'll be closing our session with soft-spoken truths and positive affirmations. And you can come back to this anytime you need a refresh. can be hard on ourselves when something arises within us that we think shouldn't because we've already worked on it or healed it or think that we have moved beyond it already. And we can be hard on ourselves and judgmental we can even feel sick and tired of dealing with the same thing that we've dealt with for years. And I just want to speak to that for a moment. If you've ever found yourself saying, I can't believe I'm still dealing with this. I can't believe this came back. I can't believe this came up again. I'm so tired of this feeling. I thought I was past this already. First of all, 
as much as we work on deconditioning, because we're alive on this planet and interacting with people and technology, we are always being subjected to reconditioning by something or some. Use their incense to cleanse our healing mantra card deck that we're going to pull a card from at the end of our session today to add to the affirmations I've written for you. Okay, we're going to put those off to the side until later. So, I want to assure you of two things. Yes, sometimes things can be released and healed in an instant and never come back or come up again. That's absolutely possible. But most people experience or process over time. Meaning, we have to do whatever we have to do, whatever we're doing, to heal clear, grow, etc. More than once, or twice, or three times, we need to repeat it. We need to practice by being aware of whatever arises. It shows us what we need to work on. And we get to not judge ourselves. Witness what you're being shown and give it space to be seen. And give yourself what you need. Everyone's process is on their own timeline and there is no formula. And the second thing I want to assure you of is when something arises and you find yourself saying this again I thought I was past this I thought I healed this I can't believe I'm right back where I started I can assure you that you're not right back where you started it's different each time You have healed. But what is being shown is that there's more to do. And now you're ready for it. And what is coming up is leaving. Each time it comes up, it's coming up to come out. And the more you surrender, instead of resisting it, the smoother and quicker you'll clear it. Okay. Speaking of clearing, Are releasing. Let's create our element of fire and light our candle for today. So that we can release the fear, the worry, and the anxiety. And the lie that life is meaningless and purposeless. I 
you can take a moment to connect with the flame. Let's release what's no longer serving you. Pull off to the side, love. Very comfortable. Isn't this so soft? I know. Yes. It's my favorite too. Hmm. Okay, so as I said earlier, we are going to be working on the gate 28, which is the gate of challenge slash adventure in quantum human design. And the gate of struggle in traditional human design. And it's in the astrological sign of Scorpio. And it's right here. Of the spleen center. So, as a reminder, we all have all of the chart, we all have all of the archetypal themes. That the chart shows us in the energy blueprint of being a human being. So in your chart, either this gate here will either be defined or activated, or undefined and not activated, and whether it's activated or not just determines you personally experience this energy, but we all experience it in some way. And as I stated earlier, there is no suffering Nowhere in our energy blueprint as humans is there a suffering gate or a suffering channel or a suffering center. But what does cause us pain and suffering is when we are out of alignment with the truth of who we are, when we are not living our authentic self, and when we're not using our energy correctly. So here's our chart form. Now before I bring our chart out, I want to just say that one of the things that I love about quantum human design is that it not only gives us language and an explanation as to what we're feeling, experiencing, and why, but it gives us a quick reference to go to where we can easily choose to flip the script That might be playing out and swing the pendulum to the optimal or the higher expression 
of the energy spectrum. I do feel like I need to enter an asterisk here to remind you that the chart is just a tool and it doesn't speak to or answer everything. It doesn't tell the whole story. Nothing does. So here's our chart that we'll be working with today. And again, just a reminder, your energetic blueprint looks just like this. And you're just going to have your own unique configuration, meaning you could have different centers. Colored in. You can have different channels. Colored in. And you can have different gates. Activated and different planetary placements that activate those gates and channels. But we all have the nine centers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The 36 channels I will count them for you. <laughs> and the 64 gates, which are all these little numbers. There's 64 numbers for the 64 gates. And the 14 symbols that you see on either side, laying out our soul purpose, and our life purpose. And the gate 28, which is right here, it gets a bad rap in the human design community, especially with it being called the gate of struggle in traditional human design which is why I love Karen Curry Parker's Higher Frequency Language, which is what the quantum language is. So if you have the gate 28 activated in your chart, you are not doomed. You are not a victim of your design. It doesn't take away your free will. You are a powerful and creative, multi-dimensional being who gets to co-create your life with the universe. You have a choice in the creation of the life that you are living and the world you are experiencing and where you are in consciousness determines your outlook and perspective. If you've ever questioned why you are here, why any of us are here, what's the point and the purpose of it all, or you found yourself smack dab in the middle of an existential crisis, that is the shadow of this gate 20. when we become aware of this and we have language around it it takes the power away and lessens the heaviness of what in the moment can feel like impending doom and before we start working on breaking up and loosening these lower vibrational energies, I want to just share that in this particular configuration, the sun is in the gate 28, line 4, 
which shows us that these challenges will be experienced through relationships. And there's also a lot of tribal energy here, and they are highly sensitive. And they have three different emotional waves. So it's going to feel almost like it's too much for one person to take throughout times in their life. But understanding this energy can make all the difference in the world in how they or you get through these times. And this is part of what the soul is here to experience. Again, this is where we'll be working today on you, and you can just think of this chart as a surrogate for your own blueprint, something just to give you a visual of where we're working on, on your own body, energetic. Does that sound good? Are you ready to get started? Okay. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. So first, we're going to take this Echinitum, which are homeopathic pellets, which is derived from plants. So in essence, this is a plant medicine, and we're going to use it to start to loosen up this dense energy. A sidebar and reminder, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a homeopath either, I have a homeopath practitioner named Jamila that I have consulted with for years and if homeopathy is something that you feel called to explore then you can connect with her or schedule a consult and I'll be sure to link her Info below. So, aconite or aconitum has many uses, but today we're going to be tapping into its ability to ease the onset of anxiety and fear when life gets way too lifey and humaning feels really hard. So, we're gonna sh start to shake up and loosen this energy. And there are some very deep-rooted stories about life being too difficult, too painful, too much of a struggle, not worth it. Just overall,
think that really started to loosen. Loosen everything up. Loosen all that energy. It's really, really stuck and embedded and congealed and rooted. And next, we're going to take our brush to break up even more of the solidified and congealed old stagnant energy, the lies and the limiting beliefs, and the old stories and the old patterns, and the old feedback loops and conditioning. And we can choose to be victims to the things that feel challenging and let it overcome us. Making us feel powerless and hopeless or we can choose to learn the lessons that we're being taught, overcome, gain strength, and resilience, and ultimately feel what you feel, but you can also know and believe that life is truly happening for you and not to you, and that nothing that we go through is wasted or purposeless. You always have a choice of your own perspective. And we are brushing, 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 brushing out the doom, out the defeat, out the despair. Brush, 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 brush. Brushing out the lie that all struggles or challenges are bad. Brushing out the story that just because something was difficult for you or seemed to fail by others' standards, that doesn't mean that you failed. Okay, love, let's see how that's looking. It's looking really good. We've done a lot of work so far. Would you go ahead and take a deep breath in for me? And slowly exhale. Let's do one more inhale. And exhale. Okay. Okay. And next, we're going to take the 
this comb and we're going to rake, rake, rake up and out and away everything that we just brushed and we'll be capturing anything else that our brush may have missed this, this rake, this comb, we'll rake it out and it has roses on it and carved into it can you see them? stories that play on loop that you are powerless that you have no control over your life rake, rake, rake rake, rake, rake raking away any remnants of victim consciousness cynicism and negative self-talk. Rake, rake, rake. Raking out the limiting beliefs that life will always be hard. And you just don't have what it takes. Raking out the lies. And the conditioning around the belief that life is a battle. Raking out the fear that can flood in around the meaning of life and the worry and the anxiety that it all could be meaningless and perfect. We definitely got any last remnants there. Okay, good. It looks to me that we have really brushed out and raked and cleared and cleansed out so much negative energy and lies. We've released and cleared the old story. And made beautiful, clean, and clear space to receive in something new. So we're going to take this soda light tower and use it, the point, to carve in new neural pathways of possibility into your consciousness so the light unites logic and intuition it opens your spiritual perception bringing information from the higher mind down to the physical level and also it calms the mind and it allows new information to be received. It stimulates the release of old mental conditioning, fixed mindsets, and it creates the space to put 
put new insights into practice. So we're going to take the point of the soda light and we're carving and creating new spaces for you to see a new perspective of seeing your struggles or challenges as an adventure in your life that ultimately deepens your ability to transform and determine what is truly meaningful and what is most valuable. In your life, we are smoothing out a new groove for you to take your insights, awareness, and wisdom you've gained to trust in your ability to triumph and persevere. By seeing its purpose and believing everything has meaning, even though you might not have clarity in the moment, trusting that you will in time. Okay, love, that looks amazing. So now. We're going to take this round piece of selenite to smooth and seal the positive, higher, and optimal energy. purifying and instills deep peace and is known for its strength and ability to reach higher vibrations. So we're going to smooth, 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 smooth. Over this newly cleansed and cleared space in your body and your aura and seal, seal, seal in some truths, okay? We're going to seal in the truth. That when you share your experiences and adventures with the right people at the right time, it teaches them what is meaningful and worth it and gives them a new definition and perspective of what is truly valuable in life. And so now we're going to smooth in and seal in a few affirmations. You can repeat them quietly in your mind. Or you can whisper them ever so softly out loud. I am not the things I've done. Or the things that have been done. Nothing I go through in life is wasted. I am here to find what is truly valuable and meaningful in life. Life is happening for me, not to me. I trust that all of my challenges 
serve a greater purpose. I am not alone when I experience struggles or challenges. I have support. I am divinely guided, loved, and protected. Okay, love, how are you feeling? As we prepare to close out our session today, let's pull a card from our healing mantra deck. And we will add one more affirmation to the ones that we just spoke. Does that sound good? And the card is sharing shame. It says, when I share my deepest pain, I give myself permission to be me. When I share my deepest pain, I give myself permission to be me. And I feel called to even though that's very self-explanatory, I feel called to read what's in the little booklet here. Hmm. It says, when shame is shared, cycles of victimhood are permitted to heal as you find the courage to speak your truth. Since abuse and neglect can only be perpetuated in silence, it is your willingness to step forward and share your life story that helps transform each wound and inspire others to be set free. Once you share your shame, you are able to honor yourself with a heightened encouragement, worthiness, and validation that you deserve to receive. That's very fitting. Very perfect for today's session. Okay, love. You are all set to either continue on with your day or sink into a deep sleep. To wake up tomorrow refreshed, renewed, And you can come back to this session anytime you find yourself needing a reset. May you remember you are loved.